New to DragonFrame 3.0 is our powerful frame-based timeline editor. You can access it through the timeline button, which looks like a little film strip here. So I'm going to click on that. And now you can see that there's a series of frames that I can scrub through. This is what I've shot already. Got 11 frames here. And at the end, the last frame is actually our live, which is represented by this uh, camera icon. So that's our live view frame. I've actually mixed up the order here at the end so I can show you how the editing works by putting it back together. If I hit play, you'll see there's a little glitch there at the end. I've swapped frames 11 and 10. And the way you move frames in the timeline editor is to select it and lift up and slide it over. And you can either overwrite, that's the big red X, or you can insert. Okay, in this case we're going to insert. So there we go, we've inserted that frame, and now it plays correctly. If you wanted to um, select a lot of frames, you can always shift click. Another thing you can do, if you need to select all the frames over, instead of lifting up, you can push sideways, and that will pick up all the frames either to the right or to the left. It's an easy way to move things around without having to reach for different tools. It's all built into the mouse moves. And you can select multiple frames, pick them up, move them, and insert them. I'm going to Apple Z undo that one. You can also copy, cut, and paste frames. If I pick these three frames and decide to copy them, they'll paste uh, where the playhead is. So if I put the playhead at the end and paste, it's going to ask me, do I want to insert these, overwrite them, insert in reverse order, or overwrite in reverse order? I'm actually just going to cancel out of this because we don't really need to move those frames. But it would put them uh, wherever the playhead is. Let's say you wanted to shoot a new frame in the middle of your sequence. Well, you can actually pick up the live view frame and insert it or overwrite it anywhere in the sequence. So I'm just going to stick it here between frames 4 and 5. Now, when I play back, there'll be a little glitch because it's going to show me the live view at frame 5. And if we wanted to actually reshoot that frame, we would shoot and it would put this frame in there. In fact, I'll just go ahead and do it. It's going to put this frame in between. It will move your live view to the next frame. If you don't want to keep inserting frames, then you can option click and say return camera to the end. And it takes it to the end. If you just want to replace a frame, in fact, I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm going to hit delete. There it goes. It's gone. I've deleted that frame out of the middle. If you wanted to overwrite a frame, if we want to actually get rid of frame 5, I could overwrite. And this does something different when I shoot. Now when I shoot, it's going to shoot the frame and actually automatically take the live view to the end. Okay, now... I could undo this, but I'm going to show you something else. Um, we have a very cool new thing called the delete bin. If I go up to edit, delete bin, you'll see that here are some of my deleted frames. I can actually touch the four frame and it's going to tell me what frame was shot before it and what frame was shot after it, indicated by these blue lines. This is telling me that this frame right here was after it and this is what really goes on five. So I'm just going to pick it up and overwrite it. And that should be right. Yep. So the delete bin is great because now when you, you can feel free to delete frames. Dragon has never permanently gotten rid of deleted frames. We always keep them in a backup folder, but now it's much easier to place them back into your sequence in case you delete something accidentally or you change your mind later. We also have a great new function called reshoot. So if you need to reshoot a sequence in the middle and you don't want to mess up with your timing, let's say you have dialogue or you have um, you know, lighting cues and you want to reshoot frames four through six and you were a little nervous about getting in there and changing those frames without messing up the subsequent frame order with the audio, you can control click and say reshoot frames. And now what will happen is, you can shoot through these frames, and when you get to the end, 
Dragon Frame automatically knows that you only want to reshoot those frames and it takes the camera back to the front of the sequence. If you need to make duplicate or hold frames, this is so easy now in Dragon Frame. You can do it in the X sheet and you can do it in the timeline and they're both done in a similar way. All you need to do is go to the frame that you want to have a hold on. So let's say for some reason we wanted this frame to hold. You'd go to the edge of the frame until you get this yellow outlined arrow. And you just click and drag. Now this frame is held and you can see that it's being held for five frames. So we give you the number, okay? And at any time you can grab that and bring it back. Or maybe you only wanted two frames of hold. A little stick in there and bring it back to one and then that the hold disappears. We also have a feature. Uh, let's say we wanted to speed up the scene and we were going to take out frames, frame four. But you weren't sure that you wanted to delete it yet. You can hide the frame. You do that by either control clicking it and saying hide frames or you can go over here to this um, blue button that is your hide button. And now that frame is hidden and it's represented by this blue line. Now if I play, it just plays right over that frame four. Go. Oh, well, actually, I'm not really missing it. <laughs> there it is. There's the jump. If you wanted to, again, um, hide the next frame, you can go ahead and hide it. And now you'll see there's two little bumps in here indicating that there's two hidden frames in that spot. That speeds that up quite a bit. If you want to unhide them, select the hidden area and hit the hide button and it unhides them. Now those are the basics of our frame-based timeline editor. But let me tell you what's going on in the background here. In the old version of Dragon Stop Motion, we would be actually making all of these changes on the fly in the background and changing them in your master file folder. So if you deleted a frame, it would actually delete it out of the folder. If you uh, copied frames, we would be copying them in the folder. So during this demo, all these edits that we've been making, instead of actually moving the files around in your master folder, we've been keeping track of an EDL. Now you can do all the export functions as normal. You can export quick times, you can export image sequences. But if you want your master files to look exactly the same, in the same order as what you're seeing in your timeline, you need to conform the scene. And to conform it, you can push this button right here, conform. It's going to render out and reorder the frames. And now your master frame folder will match exactly what you see in the timeline. This is how drag and stop motion worked. And if you like that working style, then you're going to want to hit that conform button every time you do an edit or every time you're done with the take. Drag and frame will also ask you when you quit a take if you want to conform. So again, that's the basics of our frame-based timeline editor. You don't need to leave this up all the time when you're shooting, of course. You can go ahead and close it, get back to shooting. You have another problem where you want to juggle frames around, you open it back up. Thanks for watching.